Hey everybody, Mary Z back once again for Voice Hacks. Today I am getting back to your requested content. We are gonna take a look at a band that has also had three singers. Remember back when I first started making these videos, reaction and analysis videos, I did it with Nightwish, right? We took a, a legacy band that had had three different vocalists. I am picking back up with Arch Enemy, and I think you guys are going to like this one. A lot of you have requested Arch Enemy, but I wanted to do something really unique. They've had three vocalists, you know, and a lot of folks only focus on the most recent two. But we're going to talk about all three vocalists, Johan. Angela and Elisa today. We're going to compare them doing the same song just like we did with the Nightwish video and the same part and we're going to hear how it sounds. It's going to be great. So I wanted to remind you guys the warm up with me Wednesday schedule is up on the YouTube channel. So I've got one of those coming up where you can sing along with me live on YouTube and warm up. Also follow me on Instagram at voice hacks because I've been starting to do more Q&A's and stories and so that's a good place to get your questions in also. So follow me on Instagram. So a lot of you are sitting there going arch enemy had three vocalists? Yes. Actually, they've been around a really long time, guys. For those of you who are a little bit younger, you might not realize Arch Enemy has been around for over 20 years now. And so their first vocalist was a male vocalist named Johan Liva. I had to pick a pretty old Arch Enemy song from Johan's era so that we could compare it. But what's really unique is actually Arch Enemy is cool with all their vocalists. So they did a tour actually in 2019, this year, with their original vocalist doing the original material with Johan. And so I was actually able to get newer clips with good audio so we can check out Johan's vocals. I wanted to get something from his prime time in the band when he was younger, but it was so long ago. It was in the late 90s and the very, very earliest of the 2000, about 2000. We have to remember Angela coming in for Wages of Sin in 2001 already. So it was so old, there really is no YouTube footage or anything for me to pick from. And thankfully, though, they did this reunion tour so we can get some decent footage uh, from recent performances of him doing this old song. So we're going to pick a song that is actually one of my favorite Arch Enemy songs, Silverwing. I love this song. We're going to go in order, uh, chronological order of vocalists. So we're going to start with Johan, then we're going to take a look at Angela, and we're going to look at Elisa, all doing the same chorus of the same song, and we're going to see what's the difference between their vocals and what's great about each vocalist. So let's take a look here. We're going to start with Johan. So there we see the chorus of Silverwing. What I want to point out is that Johan is what I would define as a false chord screamer. So if you've watched my channel and some of my tutorial videos and some of my definitions of different types of screaming and extreme phonations, what I've been classifying as false chord screaming is the vocal folds open and then flapping around the tissues. And there's a few ways we can tell this without looking inside Johan's throat with an endoscopy to see what he's doing. Usually when the chords are open, the phrasing is shorter. The person is running out of air sooner. So we can kind of hear that he's got a bit shorter phrasing. And it also has more of like a medium kind of growly, fly on, you know, kind of feel to it. So he's kind of doing like a medium to low false chord. <laughs> If he drives his air velocity a little faster, he'd get a little bit higher false chords. But his sound and the way that he kind of signature sound was always sort of a medium false chord. So, and that kind of gives people sort of a grindy feel as well. It's kind of a crusty sound. And so it's a little dirtier than the other two vocalists. So Johan was great. And it's really neat that they were able to do a reunion tour so we could take a look at this footage. This was actually from this year. So it's pretty cool to take a vocalist from over 20 years ago and bring him back on the stage for that. That takes a lot to still be able to false chord after all those years. Now let's take a look at Angela, the second singer, coming in around 2001. She still manages the band. We're going to take a look at Angela doing the chorus of Silverwing. What's interesting about harsh vocalists is 
we're not having to deal with any key issues here. So these are all going to be in the same tuning and the same keys because there's no pitch. Even if the band did want to change keys, it wouldn't matter for the vocalist. These are voiceless screams we're hearing. Arch Enemy always has voiceless screamers. They don't use voice with distortion typically. And one thing you notice in that last video was that the audience was singing the hook. This is what I call the Arch Enemy trick. So the hook is always in the guitar melody and the vocalist doesn't really have any melody. They're voiceless screams and it almost has a lyric effect on the guitar. The melody that you can actually sing is in the guitar line. So let's take a look at Angela and see how she does Silver Wing. Here we go. When we look at Angela, you're going to be surprised when I tell you she's also a false chord screamer. But why does it sound so much different than Johan's? And it's not a fry scream either. Well, part of it is we know because Angela has given vocal seminars and clinics, and this is what she talks about doing, first of all. But she's also had some training, so she knows what she's doing. The other thing is that when Angela does her false chord. She puts so much air velocity into it. She can actually drive some higher overtones into it. Part of it is she's also a female vocalist. She's not super small, I think like five foot eight or something, but women face cavities and larynx spaces are generally smaller. Even in a voiceless scream, we're going to have different overtones. I mean, people in general, even within the same gender, are going to have different sizes. So humans in general are just different sized. And so that means that the shape of your face and the shape of your resonance around that same kind of noise is going to be completely unique to you. And this is kind of why we still have our favorite scream screamers, even if they're voiceless screams. You don't have to have your voice in it to be unique. One thing is, is Angela is incredibly fit. She's always been an incredibly fit, hardworking person, and she is clenching her abs with all her might to drive the air velocity into those screams. She's also doing vowel lengthening tricks to make the pitches higher. She really elongates her vowels. <laughs> And in voiceless screams, if you've ever taken any lessons with me, those of you who have, I know, I know you know that you change the pitch with the vowel shape because we can't sing a different pitch, right? So by driving her air velocity really tremendously hard, which takes a lot of work and a lot of fitness, and also elongating the vowels, she's getting a much louder, higher pitched false chord. But you can still see that the phrasing is really short. Part of it's because Johan wrote it. But actually, if you look at the stuff that Angela writes later on, the phrasing is the same. We will rise, all these other nemesis, all these songs. We've got shorter phrasing because when the vocal cords are open, it doesn't matter how badass or how good of a screamer you are. You're going to run out of air sooner. A lot of my folks that do false chord also ask me to teach them fry if we, they can do it. You can go a little bit longer on the air. Air phrasing. I have to give Angela credit for being probably one of the best false chord screamers of all time. If you don't understand how or why, this is this whole breathing from the diaphragm thing. Watch my videos on breathing for Screamer. If you go to the Voice Hacks channel, I have a lot of playlists and instructionals and tutorials. So I don't get into how to do these things because I give lessons. Email me at voicehacks at gmail.com for lessons and scheduling and rates. We're going to check out the most current vocalist, Elisa, Elisa White Gliss. But what's really neat about Elisa is she's probably the most diverse and flexible vocalist of all the three. Although in this band, you know, they have a set art form. They're a melodic death metal band. There is no clean singing. But Elisa, if you go back to the catalog of the Agonist with her in it, is a tremendous clean vocalist as well. Let's take a listen to her doing Silver Wing and let's find out why she's completely different from the other two. Lisa doing the chorus and yeah it's kind of high similar to Angela but it's way different we hear the chord closure here we hear the compression and we also hear like the sustain of the phrase a little bit longer she's able to hold out the phrases a bit longer so what happens is is she's actually a fry screamer you know we know this from a, a, several different reasons it just has a different compressed sound if you can fry scream you totally know what I'm talking about because this means in my definitions closing the chords pushing air through the closed chords 
and making a voiceless scream, fry screaming. This is the hardest thing to do, though, but some folks, they are better at fry screaming and they more naturally gravitate towards it. It's also kind of what gives Elisa that more burpy kind of quality. Let's go back really quick and let's take a look at each one of them doing a piece of the verse. Let's hear a little bit more of each one, but let's kind of go more fast between each one. Let's compare each one right in a row. So we want to remember Johan is like medium false chord. This is kind of what you're li listening for as we go into the verse here. Angela, power driven, fast velocity, long vowel, high false chords. And then we're looking at Elisa, compressed, high, kind of deep quality fries. So let's listen to the verse on all three in a row here. Let's start with Johan. So right there, you could really see Angela opening up the vowels a lot. Let's watch Elisa on the verse. To me, the fry scream for Elisa is most ob obvious on the on the end there. But I teach people to do this all the time, and I can really hear the difference between the closed and open chords a lot more. What also it sounds like on Angela's recording is a lot of um, a little bit of compression on the actual uh, channel, you know, on the actual uh, vocal channel there. But she says she does false chord, and I also agree with that. And so you can see that if you can only false chord, you know, a lot of folks will come to me and learn fry, and they're, they're pissed off that they can only false chord. And I show them videos of like Angela Gasso and I show them videos of like Lauren Hart from Once Human and I remind them that look, these people are false courting and they're doing a kick ass job of it. Um, and also Johan was false courting. There's a lot of great people out there just doing false court. So don't beat yourself up if you can't do fry and don't try to strain things that are unnatural. Some of these things also may take years to learn. When I first started doing vocals and even after I got signed to record labels for a period, all I could do was false court as well in addition to my singing. I've always done both, but still, uh, you know, I couldn't fry scream for a few years, you know, and then I started doing it. Realize if that's all you can do and you're learning. Don't beat yourself up. There's a lot of people out there doing it. Just try to do the best you can at whatever it is that you can do. That's what I have to say. So remember for vocalists, we're finished, not perfect. These are the differences between the three arch enemy vocalists. And I would say if you want to know more about how to make these voiceless screams, definitely check out my playlists on YouTube. Email me at voicehacks at gmail.com for lessons if you're interested in that. And I will see you all soon. Thanks for helping me check out these badass vocalists today.